hello everyone and thank you for joining us once again on a, on a trip to nintendo land this trip will be our final trip to nintendo land for 2021 that's right it's the end of our it's the end of the year uh we made it through another one y'all uh just barely. Barely, just just barely for plenty yeah, of us of, as i'm uh, sure um yeah. but we're gonna make the, we're gonna make the best of it for this episode um, I'm joined as always as my with with my wonderful co-host, uh, Mr. Alex O'Neill. Hello, Alex. Hi, I'm here. You're here, um, and also joining us for, also from Rational Passions, Mr. Quinn Hoffman. Hello, Quinn. Hi. Hi. This is my first official Nintendo Land. S- sort of kind. I, th- I think so. Oh, I think technically, because here's how it's going to go down. Because we're because like if you've heard us three on a Nintendo related show before. Or not. You know where we're going. You know where we're going with this most recent released Nintendo game was a Pokemon uh, video game. And so we are definitely going to be uh, bringing the community uh, back and together to rank some Pokemon. Specifically uh, from the most recent release, our remake, uh, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Mm -hmm. Uh, So so we're going to get to that this episode. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but just, you know, just so you know, this will be a chiller episode. It probably won't be, you know, it's not really a lot of news. We're at the end of the year. All the news has happened. All the games have happened. You know, the game awards are happening. We might get something there, but like, I don't think it'll be anything dramatic enough to like have like a whole th- episode. We'll get Goku and Smash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that, that's past. Don't have to dodge yeah, that bullet anymore. Yeah. We don't have to dodge <laughs> yeah. that bullet anymore. I, I don't have to live in fear any, any longer. I've seen Goku. <laughs> Uh, Sakurai talking about Goku and Super Smash Brothers. Thank God. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna. We, I think I think it's still worth um, maybe talking about some of the some of the our favorite stuff uh, from the year that was 2021 on Nintendo Nintendo Switch. Maybe we could talk about the goods and the bads of stuff that's happening here. We'll, we'll do a little bit of that. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into it. Um, I think I think like what the Something I wanted to start with, again, was looking back on uh, Nintendo games that came out this year. And, you know, we didn't, I don't think we, you know, I think in the past few years, Nintendo has kind of been good about having like their big one marquee game. Uh, and I think they really didn't have that that as much this year. But I think yeah. they just had like a, a lot of solid smaller offerings but also like a lot mm. of like fan highly fan requested like very specific fan bases within nintendo got got theirs this year and i think that's been really cool to see that them the, like them kind of going back and like yeah you know we know like breath of the wild 2 2 is coming yeah we know like you know other games are coming like you know splatoon 3 bayonetta 3 like these big games that i've been talking about for a while are coming probably next mm-hmm. year but in the meantime, here's some cool stuff like new Pokemon Snap that came out on the Nintendo yeah. Switch system this year. A remake, yeah. or not a remake, but like an entirely new addition to that series, which I guess now is a series because the second game uh, mm-hmm. start from Pokemon and, you know, Pokemon picture taking uh, franchise and genre, I guess you could say now. Um, you know, we had stuff like that, which I, I really loved that game. I, I, I don't know if it'll be yeah. a game that's like talked about as much in like the larger scope of the, the, the games of the years talks that, you know, all everyone does, of course, um, around these times. Uh, but, but yeah, that, that was a game that I thoroughly enjoyed. I thought, you know, it was well made. Um, I think they evolved that, that idea in some fun ways. It wasn't perfect, but I also enjoyed it a lot for what it was. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's funny because, like, I think Nintendo has had, like, off-kilter years, like, their non-tentpole years before, like, mm-hmm. 2018 is, is like, a good example, um, which then, like, ended at the very end with Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, you know, like, the rest of that year was also kind of weird. Right. <laughs> um, and and they've we've kind of been in that moment before. We're definitely, like, leading into Breath of the Wild uh we're leading into the last of us kirby edition you know like Mm -hmm. there are big (laughs) big games that we know are come coming but it's so funny because like nintendo is just so much better at walking that line now right um and you can tell especially this year that like 
the consolidation of all their 3DS studios into Switch studios as well mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. genuinely really helped and, and helps keep that pace up because we get Metroid Dread, new Pokemon Snap, um, and Mario Golf, uh, right. things like that, all in WarioWare, where uh, even if people weren't and Mario cool. Party and Mario yeah, Party, right? And Mario Party Superstars. Yeah, I feel like those are all their kind of handheld -y style. Mm -hmm. Like those yeah. studios are, are, are have been making 3DS games in the past, and then this is where they get to be part of that front lineup. Uh, and it's yeah. I think it's good still. I, I, they have an impressive amount of stuff to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, like their their big like newer game releases have been great. And like you know, Nintendo is classically not a great online. You know they don't have, they don't do great when it comes to online stuff, but I think like in some ways this year like they did a pretty alright job with like post release content for a lot of their games. Like I feel like they have been getting better with that kind of uh, stuff, but like still some of their online features for game for specific games have not been lackluster. And of course, mm -hmm. there was the online the Nintendo sixty four uh, online expansion pack debacle that recently happened, and that's still. A pretty questionable, <laughs> pretty questionable thing. Like they did say, I think it, like pretty soon I th I saw a tweet of them saying Paper Mario, the original Paper Mario is going to be on that soon, which is cool. Yeah, the, but also, but, but also like not like I'm going to spend fifty dollars a year. Cool yeah. to like play that as much as I like really like that game. Um, it is it is a good sign that they are adding stuff already. Yeah, where like the Super Nintendo stuff was like two and a half months later they added right. like two yeah. bad games two and now games. they're at least adding one game that they promised they would add within mm -hmm. like a month so I'll, I'll take that yeah so hopefully you know now they're asking for more money from people i would hope they like greatly improve uh that system <laughs> yeah the emulation quality especially the emulation yeah, quality it's... and just like the, the what the value proposition of like what games are in this when like yeah. the, the like you said the frequency of games of like when we get them um yeah and all of that stuff i think they definitely need to get better at if they're going to be asking people for more money on a regular basis for this subscription service for sure yeah i will say it's the the price of it is like i'm like i remember when it came out i was like yo no like fuck no yeah, yeah. Uh, like immediately but there i i know people who are going to do this shit buy this because it's like hey that's the only way to do it and who cares yeah i want to play ocarina again i want to play whatever again and it's like and it's the the good games that are on that service and i'm just like yeah like sure whatever it's it's just your nostalgia saying hey do this it's fun and then you but also oh, it's like but it should be a slam dunk you know playing yeah, ocarina right. time on your switch should be like wipe the hands clean we've done this before slam dunk yeah. hell yes everybody happy but no yeah, <laughs> they, they messed still, that they, up they still had know? to like have messed up some way exactly mm -hmm. it it's it's tricky um and like I, I think something i also really appreciated from this year um which was like i think like another thing people somewhat forgot about because it was pretty early in this year but i really liked the bowser's fury yes. part of yeah. Mario 3D world this year just because like it was connected, three D yeah. of course three D world is an incredible game on its own. That we all played um, together. We all played all together. The we played through the entirety of that. That's on our YouTube channel. If anybody want to go watch that archive, it's so fantastic. good. And again, yeah, mm -hmm. it's online co op. You know, it's still a fantastic game. You have the online co op for that, and it works pretty well. Um, but just like I love the idea of like them giving us like a little bit of a glimpse of like what they're thinking about when they're making like a new 3d Mario game. Cause like, I feel like they've, mm -hmm. they've never really done that before. Like, I mean like the last time you could say they kind of did something like this was like the GameCube when they showed like demos and there's like 128 Mario or something weird mm -hmm. like that. And here they are just like giving it to us in a package that we can like freely play whenever of like, here's like an idea we had of just making like a kind of open world take on a Mario 3d Mario platformer. And it works like really well. And it's like, it's fun. I would absolutely play like an expanded version of that game or, or like some kind of, you know, even if they don't end up doing that, like I think at the end of the day, I'd still probably play a new 3d Mario, but still like at yeah. least, at least the showing that like they're willing to go that level 
to experience mm-hmm. experiment with like you know what like their biggest franchise and obviously i think that started you know with breath of the wild in some respects but i think them going them could take the next step like all right here's mario and here's a new whole new way to think of them think of what a mario 3d mario game could do and them giving us that glimpse of that uh was, yeah. was really cool and i appreciated that uh package a whole lot and i feel like not enough people have talked about that since since it released yeah, it's I really like that that Bowser's Fury package because mm-hmm. it's maybe the first time in games that we've seen a, a straight up vertical slice attached to a retail product. Mm-hmm. That yeah. like Bowser's Fury is straight up a vertical slice of what Nintendo is trying to do with Mario and it's really cool. Yeah. It's really yeah. fun and it's it's kick ass. It's and it it's it's one of the coolest demos you're ever going to have access to. And mm-hmm. you never know what direction they're going to take it. If it's in a positive way, what they're taking back, because it is straight up just that vertical slice. I'm and so, curious, like that also had the, the co-op with um, Bowser mm-hmm. Jr., mm-hmm. Um, which is new that they haven't done that before. I, and it makes me like hope that they, in addition to obviously like 3D Mario and stuff, like they're playing mm-hmm. around with, multiple characters as well uh because that's like in my opinion one of the strengths of 3d world yeah uh, right is having those distinctive characters in a mario Mm -hmm. platformer uh like mario brothers 2 like doki doki Mm -hmm. Um, totally and i i would love to see them do more of that stuff do more co-op where people are playing different characters that have different mechanics Mm -hmm. but also like to me the biggest takeaway from that bowser's fury having still not played it um is someday uh the i think power-ups are going to be a bigger thing yeah. in the next 3d right. mario yeah. like the, they love the cat suit and they love building level design around it mm-hmm. so like the idea of like a galaxy or an odyssey 2 which because i just feel like they're still going to do an odyssey 2 yeah uh, but like sure. with proper mm-hmm. mario power-ups and maybe alternate characters and stuff like sign me up yeah totally i'd, I'd be way in on whatever their next idea for Mario is. And I, I just pretty, really appreciated them kind of giving that glimpse. Um, what to what's next for that, for that franchise, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think like they had a pretty, pretty solid year over on Nintendo wise. Cause they had a lot of cool stuff in the, in the front half. Um, yeah. And then they had, you know, some pretty cool stuff in the back half. Like, like we said, like with, you know, we got Metroid Dread, which is like a long requested new 2D, fully 2D Metroidvania game. And like it, mm-hmm. it delivered like probably more than even people expected it, it to. It's a, totally. it's a, it's a fantastic game. Um, it's, it's cool that they like gave, you know, that Mercury Steam developer like a chance to like, you know, before because before they just made that remake and they did a really good job yep. on that remake. And they let them make a full fledged, the full fledged sequel. Uh, yeah. And they gave him time and money. Most importantly, yeah. like this, this game is like not rushed by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. Very, very, very polished, very well made, uh, and it's and it's awesome. And it's, and it's, I'm glad to see like you know, the the a game like this and at a level like this, um, at Nintendo giving it that much uh, showing, and also it like doing doing fairly well, all things considered, for like a Metroidvania type game. And like it, I'm it it did. Uh, very well sales wise which is also like just nice to see like that franchise kind of start succeeding thanks to like kind of the switch's popularity yeah immediately the best selling metroid yeah. just right out the gate so like yeah. as with everything on switch yes. uh, it shouldn't yeah, be surprised yeah. at this point but it feels good still yeah it feels good for sure and, and yeah and then there's a bunch of cool smaller stuff like we said like war the warrior wear which i feel like didn't which i feel like some people were into, some people were not. But again, I also liked that they like kind of tried something different with like the kind of co-op and like different mm-hmm. character kind of play styles of all the mini games. Uh, that that's something I still probably will check out someday. But I actually did not uh, pick it up just yet. Um, you know, Mario Party Superstars, which we we've, we've also played a little bit on stream, and so, yeah, I think, a you know, good Mario Party game. It's, yeah, yes. it's it's like a fantastic collection. Um, like sort of collection because it's like a re it's like partially remade but also like you know mm-hmm. has some some other stuff and like you know the Just on the on so good <laughs> the online yeah. the online like is like you know a, 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 what you what you would really want out of like an online 
uh, yep. capabilities for Mario Party and how seamless it is and just it's nice uh, like the one thing I for sure is like I really hope this does, does not get abandoned kind of like Super Mario Party did I really hope we see some kind of free free DLC or even like paid DLC like I, th- I hope we see something and they just don't kind of drop it um because they've done pretty well on with like a lot of their other popular games like you know even Mario Golf got a bunch of free free DLC this year mm-hmm. even though I think it was not even as well received as this Mario Party was um you know Animal Crossing of course finally got its big kind of final update um, huge expansion which is sick yeah which is super cool I actually I like that was enough for me to start a whole new Animal Crossing island and I've nice. and I started an, a new island and I kind of started working on it but then I guess this disclosure i started like a new day job that's like full-time and that like kind of up upended some of that so um i do want to keep going with it so hopefully um by by our next episode i'll have more to talk about the the island designing stuff because i haven't even got to that yet um but it, but it, but it's still it was fun like uh kind of seeing how they a lot of the new stuff they added they like still sprinkled in while you're like doing that initial on ramping of like, Yari and I, you got an mm-hmm. Island and now you got a house and now you can do this. And now we opened up the whole, the whole courtyard and now, you know, people are, other people are showing up and you can do more things. And the, you, the, like, so you still get like a nice cadence of like, Oh yeah, I, I already kind of did this when I first started a new Island, but now here's like a little new thing I can start doing now too, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so that's, so that's really cool. Um, I think that's like a lot of the major stuff there. I do want to say uh, like, Skyward Sword. Skyward, right? Skyward Sword, Skyward Sword HD. HD. They I put paid out a, 60 United States dollars for that game, and I beat that game. Uh, Me too. <laughs> that's uh, my thoughts. Uh, that was your yeah. first time playing it, though, right, Quinn? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, for, you know, all the people talking about how Nintendo sold that game for 60 bucks, I get it, yes, but... Yeah. I appreciate them putting out that game in a way that you can play it without motion controls. Finally, yes. um, which you know does mm-hmm. not necessarily help that game, but, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, it's good to know that like it's a really. I'll say you know for all of what it's worth, it's a very good version of that game. Looks very yeah. good, uh, runs beautifully. Uh, but I mean, end of an era, man. The end of Smash Brothers Ultimate happened. Yes. just uh, yeah, just that, weeks ago. Yeah, just weeks ago, we had our final uh, DLC character for Smash, which was yeah, it was pretty Mickey Mouse. Yeah, Mickey Mick, Mouse. Mr. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh, he's in <laughs> anime. It Mickey is, Mouse. It is. It is hood. Anime, anime Mickey Mouse is in Smash. <laughs> they couldn't get Goku, but they got the next best thing. Yeah, um, the biggest yeah. corporation in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, Sorzen, yeah, like you said, like kind of an end of an era. It's, it was, it's, you know, it's wild to think about, even like it's kind of wild to think about, you know, Smash. Best fighting game roster of all time is, complete. yeah, best, best, best mm-hmm. fighting game roster. Like, I don't think, again, like it's such a, they made an even more monumental task for themselves by trying to have to now one up this, one up this game. Like, they pretty yeah. much can't one up this game. Um, which is fine which is which is which yeah like in some ways it's fine but in some ways like it's i'm i I, it's i'm excited for another smash no doubt but i'm not excited for the discussion around a new smash because of just like you know it'll just be that's why like it is an end of an era you know like there will will never be anything like this smash will never be i think as high as it is now Um, that's right and and that's okay because like obviously things need to to change and move on. Ebb and flow. Uh, and and Smash has had like yeah, now, what a what a time it's had. <laughs> yeah. Now multi now multiverses can come out and they can put Gandalf in multiverses <laughs> fighting fighting Batman and everyone will be like yeah that's that's the real that's the new Smash baby. I you know like it I mean, is it is funny because like Smash obviously is this pillar of what it is, of like it is mm-hmm. like in my opinion the ultimate crossover in at least the video game space right um and you know it might be usurped at some point in the future just because crossovers are gonna get bigger and bigger mm-hmm. but like yeah. I like that Smash was at the forefront of that kind of thing but totally separate and now it has gotten to kind of top off in the hype of that era of this, this mm-hmm. crossover era that we're probably, it's only going to get fucking bigger as yeah. the next few years go on with Marvel and everything. So, yeah. uh, 
it, it like got to exist in that era, but still be in its own way uh, and do its own thing the way Sakura has always kind of done it. But like we got the best trailers for a video game we're probably ever going to get, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, like for sure. truly the, the most hype. And, you know, one of the best supported Nintendo, the best supported Nintendo game period, but like mm -hmm. one of the best supported post-launch video games ever. Yeah, um, for and sure. certainly like, you know, compare this to Dragon Ball Fighters and it's like you get just as much hype and stuff for for that extremely intense fighting game community for that game. And I yeah, there, there's just never going to be anything like it. But I'm glad we got to be here for this this smash moment yeah, and for, along mm -hmm. for this crazy ride. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's super cool. It's definitely, you know, something that will live on. And the I, payoff and is like, Sakurai gets to tweet about his cat now, and that's yeah, just great. We can just he can just he can just he can just do whatever he wants really, and just be yeah, like, really. I'm good. I'm I'm out. I don't give a f what these kids say. What character they want to smash anymore? One of the best in the biz, and he gets to go out on top. So I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, there was there's definitely some smaller stuff I think that uh that came out on switch as well like there was some stuff i I, th I definitely think i missed um in recent months I th i'd say that probably uh big indie hits that like dropped on uh switch um that i haven't i haven't gotten the, t the time to check out yet. like i think like is inscription on switch or no is that only on it's PC? you see it's only not it's only on but PC. I, okay. I dropped this um i dropped this theory on the rpg uh like preview for this month Sure. Um, so I'm going to drop it here now because it's Nintendo Land. Nintendo always absolute kings and queens of like finding indie games that are only on PC and getting them on Switch first. Yeah. Perfect example. Loop Hero is coming to Switch exclusively yeah. first in just a couple days now. Um, that's a good, and that's that a good is one to get on there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's exactly, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's right in the category of Hades and uh, Into the Breach. Uh, and I'm calling it now. Uh, uh inscription is going to be the next one for sure i think that's going to be first on switch yeah uh, I they're going to make that happen as mm -hmm. like just another in those like hey nintendo is kind of paying way more attention than microsoft yeah, or sony yeah they're yeah they're making they're making the moves and i think like indie developers are all in on that move right that thing that's also yeah. a thing like of course like nintendo of course like they, they like they want to get their game on switch because they know how well it would do on that on that platform and um, I just appreciate them picking the the actual yeah. reasonable hardware and mechanical games to do it and like really backing those horses in a cool way. Yeah. yeah. And I know um, that Nintendo, their in, in the indie program rather in quotes, is kind of good. And people like working with Nintendo on this because it's people who are just like, yo, we just want your game. Yeah. yeah. We'll pay you hand over fist money. To put your product your, on our get service, your, get your cool game on here. Yeah, and if I re if I recall correctly, it's like the Switch and the the current Xbox are like the easiest like onboarding to get games across com compared to like Sony or whatever. So yeah, yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, and there there was like a ton there was like a ton of cool things that I can think of off the top of my head. I know I'm gonna miss some, but like Axiom Verge two, another really cool Metroidvania oh. earlier oh, this year. Axiom Verge yeah. two great great game uh I, I i think i haven't beaten it but i got i did get pretty deep into it I, I definitely want to return to it but it's really fun you know it's you know it's single developer it's that game was super fun if you like metroidvania type games uh more re most most recently i haven't played uh this version but that's Des that door just came to switch like i think like a week or two ago and i did yeah it's on yep. switch it came if it finally switch came and ps4 switch yeah. and ps4 and ps5 it's on there now and I absolutely recommend playing that game. It's probably oh, good. It's probably I I haven't sat down and really thought about it, but it's easy, it's definitely a, a front runner for my personal game of the year because uh, I liked it a lot. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, is there any other kind of smaller games that stood out to either of you that you uh, definitely played a lot stuff. Of? Uh, definitely stuff I'm forgetting. Uh, I know like Disco Elysium came to Switch this year, but I also get yeah. everything else. But yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm like totally blanking. I like the one at the top of my head is uh, uh, Loop Hero because I haven't gotten to play that yet, and yeah. I'm definitely and going I, to play, I that play that when it comes yeah. out. Mm -hmm. No, 
Um, and obviously that was a big February game. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that I'll be able to get the chance to put some time into it before the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Hyperlight Drifter came to Switch this year, right? No, I don't. Th- yeah, I think that was. I think it was. Yeah, I think that was a few years ago. But it, it's, it's yeah, still no, that's still a great. It's game. still good. Still great yeah, game. I. I'm gonna like show my cards here. Um, I have barely played my Switch this year, except for Mario Golf, Skyward Sword, Mario Party, mm-hmm. Smash, and that's it. It's a similar uh, similar vein for me, and maybe we should talk about this whole Switch Pro debacle. This this kind of right uh, situation that got ahead of Nintendo uh, earlier this year. I you know obviously I think literally from the word go of 2021, yeah. like January, we were getting reports on the Switch Pro. Like yeah. obviously it, oh, it yeah. had been happening into last year, and to the point where you know we will we don't know we may never know, but it definitely feels like Nintendo was looking at it, and then the chip shortage happened, and they decided to push something that seems a lot more reasonable like the switch oled uh mm-hmm. out and maybe mm-hmm. uh switch gears into forget the pun uh developing an entire follow-up console in the same vein in the same vein that we might not hear about until the year after next right uh, yeah. or next year you know it's very strong potential that we'll hear about it before the end of this coming year but it's obvious that Nintendo is working on new hardware and they're always looking at options for what's coming next. And what's nice is it seems like they are going to follow up the switch with a kind of comparable system directly yeah. Uh, yeah. for the first time in years. They, they've done this literally probably Nintendo to su- super Nintendo is the last time they did anything right. like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's exciting. But yeah, we definitely like July was a rough time. Yeah, for people I know the whole, the, the switch the, yeah, the whole, people wanted to believe and i totally get that i i definitely would admit like i would i would i was i was there was definitely a short period of time where i was on the believer train and i wanted to believe that we were getting this powerful switch because it would just be great to like i i think the switch mm-hmm. is is generally like there's definitely games that, that are showing it's like uh it's age it's age like the one that paint that like point uh, sticks out to my mind the most is age of calamity uh, the Hyrule yes. Warriors, like Zelda game, that Breath of the Wild game, like that was pretty frame rate rough and ran pretty yeah. roughly on the game. As, as cool as it looked, and as it looked, it man, that would that game would be <laughs> would be much better on like a slightly. All it need was like a, a little bit more power from something like a Switch Pro, and that would be like a that would be a great game. Uh, yeah, def- definitely some other stuff that would be helped out you know, running on that switch. I know like um, another game I know a lot of you played earlier this year was like monster hunter rise. I feel like that'd be another great one. I'm sure that could probably would probably, it's probably fine. Generally. Like, like I remember when it came out, a lot of people still enjoyed it, but I feel like if we had a pro, it it would have been runs at like a flawless 24 frames per second. (laughs) Sometimes, which like because it is so locked and so smooth, it does look, genuinely very good because it's just like mm-hmm. they spent time on that v-sync you know <laughs> like yeah, they knew right. it was important uh so like and i will say like that i totally blanked but yeah monster Hunter rise like i played that game two weeks ago <laughs> because i still <laughs> fucking love that game like absolutely top tier yeah. love that game probably like number three on my game of the year list for the year um put like i actually finished the high rank hunts in that game i'm like le- high like high rank 27 so i'm in that point where you're just leveling up uh nice. absolutely adore it truly think it is the best monster hunter by a country mile um mm. and i'm excited it's coming to pc i'm ex- very excited for the expansion uh yeah, i will actually like year. be in that day one for sure uh because i just nice. like monster hunter rise is stellar like all of the connecting online matchmaking lobbies everything that game is top to bottom just flawless Mm -hmm. um which is good because like you know that game sold like i think in its opening week even better than monster hunter world did not quite like the the max because that's Mm -hmm. capcom's best-selling video game ever right uh but but definitely like it sold very close to how well that game did Mm -hmm. which is just great because monster hunter's on top uh, and and that game's getting an expansion, and uh, I'm excited to play it. But I, the reason I bring up the Switch Pro is because, like, I think that's it's a problem. Like, Nintendo 
it's gonna get worse from here on out which is the big yeah. bummer but like yeah. frame rate in games is now like at a point where like it's kind of getting standardized on next gen and yeah. uh nintendo is falling behind and they care about that stuff so yeah. yeah i think we're we are definitely closer now to hearing about whatever's next for the switch we're at the five-year mark which is like the, the fucking grim reaper is right it's the bell. Fuck. Yeah. Five years, five years oh in March. My God. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, for Nintendo platform. 2017. <laughs> March 2017. Was the Switch release. Grim Reaper is sharpening his scythe, it's, ready to yeah. take that thing down. It's, so, yeah, like, that's that's very that's very fair, um, for sure. Uh, yeah, and I, and I think that's definitely what we're at, what the future holds. I, like, I'm definitely mm-hmm. curious about next year, but I think I think we can talk about more what what the once we get more into next year, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we will definitely talk about this will not be the last we probably talk about some kind of switch pro rumor. I'm going to, I'm going to write yeah, down. Like, Cause I forgot. I'm going to, we have a game of the year doc about like things that messed up this year. I'm going to write the switch. Yeah. Pro that's actually there. a pretty good idea. Yeah. For sure. um, <laughs> my only switch pro thoughts is people blew this the fuck up for no reason. They were like 4k switch. And I'm like, that I mean, you, they, you will you will never be able to get 4K on a handheld device. But that's like, not you that, know, that's that will not play games like this. They, I know, and it was like, about. but like was, they weren't blowing it out of proportion because like we had very reputable sources reporting right. on. Yeah, them. yeah. But it, I that's, just like I just I just saw I was like I was I was in the circle of like I don't give a shit. But I just saw people blowing it up, and I was like, why? It's it's gonna it's near the end of its life cycle. We are going to see something new and exciting in like three years from Nintendo in terms of hardware. Like we can I think, simmer. I think it's we'll see if we see a pro device, it'll be like an actual console and it'll mm-hmm. then they'll have like a mobile version of it, like a switch or something They're like, hey, if you want something that like has a super crazy quality on your TV, here's an actual box. But if you want something that's like 1080 and reliable frame rate or 720 reliable frame rate, here's a switch kind of like a handheld style thing. And you can plug it into your TV and it'll give you 1080 and a solid 30. Like, but like these are the que- we, you know, we're, we're the people that talk yeah. about this. We, we got to ask yeah. these questions and make these these assumptions just because like I think that's a good point of like we don't know if they're going to do that kind of split hardware yeah. thing. You know, we really don't right. know what the lessons they learn from the switch are other than it's good and people like it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I, there is definitely like a lot of curiosity as to yeah, what. Def- definitely. Definitely. That's, that's kind of where I'm at where it's like, I have a lot of curiosity of it more than anything yeah. of just like, I don't know if we'll get a, like a switch pro, but I feel like whatever the next thing is, um, I, th- I feel like it's still going to have some connection to the switch just because of yeah. how, how successful it is, like how much of a game library now is like being brought up with the like millions upon millions of people have switch games and switch is in their houses. You know, they're now like actually starting to have like proper subscription services where like people have these like, like, mm-hmm. you know, streaming services of games and like Nintendo accounts and online accounts, like, like a lot of these other things do granted they I would say they're not up to the bar of what a lot of these other ones like Xbox and, playstation have had for years now but like nintendo is doing those things now yeah Mm -hmm. but for better or worse and like i feel like like once you once you you get to a point like they can't they can't do what they they've done in the past anymore like they can't yeah like just cut loose from this console and then be like here's a new subscription service where we're gonna give you these nintendo games these old nintendo games or here's virtual console again and we're gonna like slowly dolly's out like no like you've already given us this subscription service that like has a bunch of these things in this are like readily readily available and even though it's not the best version of it it could be um like they, they they've made it like and they can't i think they can't go back like a lot of a lot of the things they've done with the switch like i think they can't go back on now and now they yeah. have to like keep going um so i think mm-hmm. like whatever this next console will be like I, it'll still kind of probably be switch adjacent yeah and like if 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 folks out there are like doubting or, or looking for more evidence as to like Nintendo's full change in course, like think about the studios that put out games this year, like the WarioWare game and stuff like those were 3DS studios that are making Switch games now. You can't like you cannot put that 
th- that back back in the box like you've right. totally yes. onboarded all yep. of your studios to be working on a single platform where you had them split up before like that yes. takes a lot of coordination yes. and work, and you you yep. can't undo that. Like, you know? that, like, like definitely all the internal issues, but, but namely Game Freak and and, and like the Pokemon company. Yep. Like, yeah, all of them have been moved up to. They've all upgraded their studios to start making console level Pokemon mm-hmm. games, which they never had done before before the, yep. the Switch. This is, this so is like big, that's you know? so like that is yeah. like that is like a step you can't go back from. Like if they're doing that, like that's a hundred percent. Like you're right. Yeah. So. Like they're so not like, they're not going back all of a sudden to having like one yep. big one one sole home console and, and like a, a and, and a handheld that'll be like yep. that thing that like it'll it'll probably continue to be some kind of hybrid or just some console. It'll play the same games it'll, like it'll play all the playing. same stuff. That's so. why I on like I said I see them doing a box and a hybrid console because I can see Nintendo putting the resources behind. Cool, let's get the same source code that does the box. That does the hybrid console. I can see yeah. them investing billions of dollars into that and making those those source codes the exact same and making it easy for their devs who have already right. like jumped to ship and be like, cool, it's here. Sure, there will be two boxes, codes the same, and just kind of work around it. Yeah, it's essentially what Xbox is yeah. doing, but or, in, or, in a Nintendo way. Or yeah, or like you know, there. I think I, I'm pretty sure I'm remembering this correctly, but I want to say that Nintendo and Microsoft were like in talks about doing like Azure their streaming stuff. I thought that was like a thing at one point, and like they could still do like a homed a homed console thing where your games are better, and then have like something you can take on the go that like streams from that box or something. Because like there's yeah. mm-hmm. that's totally a thing they could do next as well um it's it's definitely a possibility um i think um uh, one other uh, one other uh, this is like a uh, a different cut from going from talking about switch pro futures and things another game i wanted to talk about that i was also a game that i blanked on for for, that was another big one and pokemon related it was pokemon unite like that was this year i like that game a lot um it was one of those games I, I like. I definitely had like a short like honeymoon period with, but I played a whole bunch mm-hmm. of it for like a like month, two month. And then I think I just kind of like I think something else came out, and then I started playing that. And it's a game I like want to go back to, but it's like such an uphill battle that it yeah. feels like because it is kind of like a mobile game adjacent and it's free mm-hmm. to play. And like if I want to like get into this, I have to like start like probably buying instead of like sitting here trying to grind out because it's like i want to play this new pokemon they put a new pokemon it looks cool and they look fun but i don't want to spend money to just go play this pokemon like i want to like try and work my way to that but it's like that's like a whole grind in and of itself so now it's Mm -hmm. like it's challenging but even regardless like i think them taking the idea like like I, i remember from like a year ago when they announced it and thinking how insane it was to be like, this does not feel like it'll be something as monumental as it is or as good as it was. And then it came out and it was good. Even as much as the idea of it made sense, like it just, it felt like a game that was like, I don't, I don't know how long this will last or this just feels like it could be like, like, you know, a big, a big dumpster fire. Cause there's definitely been Pokemon games that have been hit or miss. Like not, yeah. not necessarily mainline games in my personal opinion, but like games that have just kind of come out of nowhere and, Shout out to the ones that are on GameCube. Yeah. Yeah. So like seeing this game and then come out and it's like, and it's like still pretty popular. Like they've mm-hmm. added, they've been again with like the Nintendo's post launch. Like granted, this is like, I think is not necessarily directly Nintendo, but more like Pokemon company and whatever. Mm-hmm. Mo- I think it's like a mobile game studio that, that does actually work on this game. Yeah. Like, I think it's like a 10 cent adjacent one. Yeah. Yeah. They've been updating that game like crazy. Like, there's literally been like a new po- a new. It feels like there's been a new Pokemon added to this game like almost like every two weeks or something. Like, it's not that far that's off like, from that. It's pretty insane. Like how much that's the League of Legends mm-hmm. pace when they yeah, first launched. Yeah, like, it's, legi- it's like legitimately like that kind of pace with that game, and it's and it's cool, and uh, and I and I appreciate that. And I think it it makes that game probably still why it still feels like mm-hmm. it's still kind of in a conversation about. Um, like MOBA stuff, um, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, they, they just need to they need to rehaul the the pay to win stuff in that game for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and think about it. I think from like a long term 
perspective mm-hmm. because I, I just think that's where they were at when they first made it. Like, this isn't going to be huge. Yeah. I don't know why they would think that about any fucking Pokemon property at this point. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. they they probably went into it thinking, like, let's try and make as much money out of it as we can from the get-go. Uh, and I think now that people, like, actually like it, they might try and restructure it to something that can yeah. last. For sure. And that's my hope. That's that. Yeah, I definitely agree. I'm definitely could keep my eye on you yeah, and, and maybe one point maybe when there's like maybe other stuff i don't want to play as much of course the 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 destiny is maybe it's a little slow which isn't gonna that's, um, be anytime soon but uh timmy studios made that that's t-m-i t-i-m-i okay. and they are a subsidiary of tencent um, there, you, there you go I, that's i'm like pretty sure they were right I'm, yeah i'm pretty sure they were like a mobile studio that maybe made like other Mm-hmm. Mobuts type games specifically for phones so this is kind of like them making this like phone slash console version of one makes sense yeah they worked on call of duty mobile which is actually very well received so yeah i've heard that. i've heard that too but also fuck activision <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah exactly i was about to like flip off the camera but i'm not <laughs> fuck go, you, bobby go, to, uh, go to jail bobby yeah, right. yeah. you were a criminal um but yeah yeah that 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 aside um nintendo had a good year 2021 mm-hmm. overall i i enjoyed a lot of the games they put out um i'm looking forward to a lot of games that are coming especially like they're not that far off and we'll have another Pokemon game in like just like two months. Yeah, <laughs> which is really Ar- exciting. Legends Arceus, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Monster um, Hunter Pokemon. Monster, I'm very excited to. Yeah, I'm very, to see I'm like. very curious to see what that what their take on a action RPG Pokemon is. Um, and there's there's some other stuff I'm sure I'm blanking. I mean, like Bayonetta it, two and I Breath mean, of the Wild two uh, finally yeah, coming. Bayonetta three, Breath of the Wild two, Bayonetta three, of course, yeah. Splatoon, yes, Splatoon, whichever Splatoon, we're on, we're on. Splatoon three yeah. as well. Um, and Metroid Prime Four. Uh, I mean, we'll probably hear hear about it next yeah. year, maybe, but maybe, yeah. maybe we'll hopefully finally hear about it. Um, Could be the t- time for the Prime trilogy. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. I just pray to God that we get Wind Waker on the fucking Switch. But yeah, and uh, it, Kirby, give uh, me what right, I want. Right, the big, that's that was one I was trying to think of. Like there was one other like big, Kirby in the Forgotten Land like, game. They like yeah. put like a spring date on, so it's like relatively soon-ish in the grand mm-hmm. scheme. Um. But yeah, yeah so I, I, and they've they've got plenty of surprises, yes. I'm sure. Yes. Like, I'm, so that's the yeah. best thing about Nintendo. So that's, so. that's for sure. So um, before we get into our rankings, I will say this will probably be the last Nintendo Land. Like I said, this is the last one for the year. But our first mm-hmm. Nintendo Land for next year will probably be February, around when that Pokemon yeah, game post Arceus. Because we'll probably January will probably be in Game of the Year throws like we yes. usually are. So expect Game of the Year type content. Uh, then expect um, everyone to be sad and more depressed than normal yes <laughs> that, that happens sometimes for it's sure the seasonal depression um, kicks but, we'll also, but i'm sure also when we get to that february episode we'll we'll talk some more about what we hope for i'm gonna to be see. hype uh, yeah, we'll, <laughs> y'all know uh, I'll be mike excited. and i are gonna be ready for destiny yeah well <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll be in some destiny destiny hole somewhere and then i'll exactly. like reemerge to be like oh yeah it's something nintendo what the fuck what Savathun's gonna see her shadow, and we'll get six more weeks of winter. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. Um, um, but yeah, I think I think on that February episode, we'll definitely talk more about like what we hope to see uh for Nintendo next year, and maybe even make some like predictions and see if those predictions yes. come through. Uh something mm-hmm. like that. So we'll, yeah, we'll 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 get to that. But let's um get into let's get our committee jackets on, gentlemen. I gotta get a lab coat for this. <sighs> Get it on, because uh, it's time to commit to ranking some more Pokemon. It's been a while right. since we've done this. Do you have? Do you? Do you do, this is this is how prepared we were for this. Do Do, do you still have the the doc that we've all the, all the Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, I have that up. Are you kidding me? Okay, fantastic. I should have. I, I should have pulled not, that up, but I could not find it when I looked earlier. So. That's, that tells you how prepared I was again, once again, for this. Uh, I'm going to, I got hey, some Mike, dice. You here. edit, you edit this, right? Um, yes, Mike does edit no, this. No, wait, no, I thought, I thought you did, Alex. Oh, the ranking, oh, the document, or I thought. We were no, talking I'm talking about the oh, video. Oh, the video, the video, video. Yes, I edit the video. Yes. I thought you were talking about the oh, document. That was so nice. <laughs> I need I to edit, find my cat real quick. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Why? Thank you. 
Uh, up to no good. Uh, uh, I'm gonna okay. roll. Well, Walkman's gone. I'm gonna roll some dice, and okay. I, obviously, complete scientific method. We are going to use these dice to choose the order by which we will be presenting Pokemon. Thank you. Okay. I like immediately looked at my bed, and there he was. And I'm like, uh, good. Make sure you're not <laughs> being an asshole somewhere. All right, Quinn. I'm gonna roll some dice, and that'll help us pick what order we're gonna go in. I got a red die, a white die, and a black die. Who wants to be what? Uh, do you not have green? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I'll do white. Okay. Because I'm a good guy. I'll just put you on red, Mike. That works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got a six. Okay. Quinn got a three. Mike got a one. So it's going to be me, Quinn, Mike. That works. Love being middle of the pack. Um, All right. So, yeah. So, again, we've we've had our we've had our ranks uh, before. Mm-hmm. I I asked that mainly just be, just in case like we if we had already ranked one of these, they probably haven't. That's I, true. That's but I don't question. think we have because like you know we we've like other the earlier episodes we have done, uh, which has been mm-hmm. a while since we've done one of these. What episode in Nintendo Land? Is November this? of 2020 was the last time we did one. Hell yeah, yeah it's, it's been a year. It's been a year. Because <laughs> we probably did it the last time the uh, another Pokemon game came out. That's probably why. Yeah, it was the, the Sword and Shield DLC. Right. It was Nintendo so Land was, episode five. Oh, five. It wasn't like we added five. no one. <laughs> yep. It was like six Pokemon. Yeah, and because like because like um just 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 so that's to claim disclaim that we usually we usually just kind of pick from a, a wide swath. I think so a couple of those times mm-hmm. just from g- in general. Where this time we are going to be focused on. The Pokemon that uh, most recently released, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, which admittedly some of us have not played a lot. Of. So that's also kind of why we're just doing a ranking. If I'm just being real, because I've but it's not all, had that but, much time to play it myself as much as I want to play it. Because I because I do actually like you know aside mm-hmm. just for a quick t- talk about Diamond and Pearl, like it's it's probably my second favorite generation of Pokemon games. Like I love like Di- Gold and Silver is still my favorite, but this one after this was like it was like that perfect hit a Pokemon that like rekindled my like love for that franchise when I was like, like it, it came out like when I was in like mid high school. Um, and it was just like, I got a DS and they finally added online play to, to D to the, the game. That's the first game that had online functionality with Pokemon in it. It had the global trade center, which I have like weird nostalgia mm-hmm. for of just like, remember every time going there and being like, I just, I just want like a normal ass Pokemon just to fill up this decks people are like i want like a shiny legendary deoxys. pokemon deoxys yeah. for this like you know bird pokemon this is like come on man like that was ba- that was out that of control was, back that then. was very much it was so fun though that was very much that era of like online pokemon which is like it's not as it's the it, first era there's definitely probably <laughs> I, some of that still but i don't think it's as insane no they, I got like a shiny Deoxys for a fucking Eevee. And I, was I like, mean, yeah, like, yeah, it yeah. was the first iteration of Wonder Trade, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Wonder Trade is incredible. So, shout out, yeah. yeah. Shout out to GTS, baby. Love it. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like I loved, I loved Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, which mm-hmm. was kind of like it's, yeah, that was still when they were doing like the, the third that kind of combined the two versions. Like they don't. And really... Pla- Platinum was like the first time they played with like actual Pokemon level design too. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we're gonna have you walk on walls and do cool stuff. Yeah, you like went like... into like a weird, crazy dimension world, and it was it was cool. That I really liked that. Uh, that was probably my favorite. Again, second favorite generation. I like. There's a lot of Pokemon. Mm-hmm. We'll probably get into. I pulled a lot that I. I know uh, exactly what we're starting we're, with. We're we're uh, fond of, but yeah. Let's get into some ranking, y'all. Alex, like you said, if you roll the dice, you're first up. What's your first Pokemon? Uh, I'm going to pull up this Bulbapedia entry because this, you know, everyone needs to see this very good boy and or girl. Uh, number 463. Licky Licky, baby. Oh. Start, start, start oh, with the Freako. Scumbag. Freak. Uh, I... <laughs> Now, like it. I feel like when we did like OG, <laughs> look at this fucking guy. <laughs> uh, He's got like a little like the little butler or like God. a dress shirt like little thing, but it's just his skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God. I like, and he's got what? like the pompadour. 
what like, I'll say, because yeah. you know, I went through the Diamond Pearl decks last night. This is like the generation when they're like, let's go back and fuck fuck things up. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, they, this... they, they like added some evolutions to Pokemon and like didn't really. Yes, absolutely. They didn't yeah. think about the consequences of that. I mean, you get the good with the bad. I'm sure we, we might talk about some of those sweet uh, new evolutions that we get to some Pokemon yes. later. I don't want to spoil them, absolutely. but. Uh, Licky Licky is one of those ones where they're like, you know, what is some weirdos from Kanto? Oh, Lickitung, let's give him an evolution. Uh, yeah. And it's, weird, it was weird probably po- a mistake. I, I <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, I was gonna say we. Um, I, I don't like this one as much because they made his tongue shorter. To yeah, cowards. They should have kept the tongue, the, the tongue longer, like the like like a tongue was. So trash. And, and they I spell just... <laughs> Licky twice in two different ways. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I just like I love this generation of the weird evolutions because it's like, oh yeah, how do we get him to evolve? Oh yeah, he needs to learn fucking rollout. Yep. And he evolves. And I'm just so like weird. it's the stupidest shit that I'm so here for. I mean we cause we got like the EV evolutions in this one where we're Leafeon and Glaceon, which is like mm-hmm. do a do a fight next to this rock. Yeah. <laughs> which yeah, is also yeah, really like, great. Sure. All right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Lick- Licky Licky, probably like the least necessary late game yes. evolution edition, but I'm so happy it exists. I um, obviously this is nothing but science when we rate these Pokemon. Uh, this is like the definition of a swimming in sevens Pokemon, and I'm like yes. so happy to be here for him. <laughs> so yeah, this is a seven to me. <laughs> look at I'm his a... little, look at his little his scarf ascot did it's so dumb he just looks like i love him because he looks like an asshole he looks like an actual person yeah, you see on the street and be like yo that's a fucking punk. That's a he, he's punk. your friend that like eats all your snacks but you're okay yeah. with it because he tells really funny jokes while he does yeah, it like, you rest, yeah i'm like. gonna i'm gonna give him a seven too okay Swimming in sevens. What do you think, Mike? Um, again, I'm not a fan that they made his tongue shorter. <laughs> and uh, and uh, also, an understandable also, 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 like, again, like you said, all of his, his, like, they gave him an outfit, but it's like his skin. So, like, he has like a bib, and it doesn't make any fucking sense <laughs> mm-hmm. why he has a bib. Uh, but he is, getting, but, he, but also like, but also I'm looking at the, I'm, I went back and like looked at the sprites of them and in the sprite, he's, he looks like he's given two thumbs up like this and his tongue yeah. is like, like extruded out. And that's, that's a pretty good time. Um, so, so I'm going to also, uh, that equaled out cause I was gonna give him a low score, but then I saw the thumb up sprite and I was like, all right, you know what? Back I'll, in, back in. I'll <laughs> give, I'll, I'll also give him a, a seven. Licky, licky, the perfect seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the highest score anyone can ever get. That's that's as high yeah. as that's as high as that one's gonna get for. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Absolutely. No perfect ten, but we only have like a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's there's some there's a perfect seven though. Perfect, mm-hmm. a perfect seven. It's fine with me. All right, Quinn. All right, Quinn. You're on to your first Pokemon. <clears throat> While we're swimming in the Freakos, mm-hmm. okay. my first choice is the definition. Of a Frico, it's Spirit Tomb. Oh, Spirit Tomb! Uh, Spirit Tomb. This cool. It's a, it's such a cool Pokemon, but it's just a fucking ghost rock. <laughs> it yeah, it kind of is. It, it's just it, like it, a like if you. It's just a dumb face that comes out of a rock. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, if you go down, I just want to read the descriptions. <clears throat> okay, go for it. For a brilliant diamond. It is a Pokemon that was formed by 108 spirits. It is bound to a fissure in an odd keystone. And then in Pearl, it's it was bound to a fissure in an odd keystone as punishment for misdeeds 500 years ago. Damn. What the fuck? (laughs) Does that mean it was a Pokemon 500 years ago or was it a person? We'll never know. We don't know. And it's (laughs) like it's a haunted rock. It literally is a fucking haunted rock. I'll say and, in Spirit Tomb's defense, the the ghost dark matching is a is a good it's a good matchup. Yeah, I remember. At the, it is. I remember at the time, at the time of this, which was like a big deal, and this and that's why fairy Pokemon came into being was because this because he was the one 
Because mm-hmm. during that whole era of Pokemon, that like Ghost Dark did not have a weakness. So like, yeah, I remember. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it, it didn't have a weakness, so he was like a. a Plus, it's immune a, to fighting, and you can be stuff, a true. Like, you can make a true menace if you like. We're yeah. getting into like Pokemon playing online or whatever with the spear tune oh. for sure. And and while we're being scientists here, since it's a rock, guess how much it weighs? Please. Like five, two, like two pounds, two hundred and thirty-eight pounds. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, this is that yeah. a rock? That's a boulder. <laughs> yeah, but it's also three feet tall. That's like yeah. insane. I didn't. I, we gotta look at the weight more often. What we look at yeah. this one? Yeah, um, for sure. And guess what? It can it can Dynamax. So really. it can. I have seen a Dynamax uh, Spirit Tomb. Word. That's pretty cool, actually. I just and want I was... to know that Licky Licky is 308 pounds. <laughs> Five foot, 308 pounds. <laughs> just pure body. Absolute, absolute unit. It's all the fucking <laughs> snacks he's got like under his gills. All of uh, it. Um, I yeah, like Spear like... Tomb. Um, I do too. It's one of those bold Pokemon that doesn't need to evolve, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think, Quinn? What, what would you score Spear Tomb? A solid eight five. It's okay. weird. I remember getting it for the first time and having to like find a guide to get it. They just like go underground and do some like weird shit in Diamond and Pearl. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. It's kind of like an adventure to get this Pokemon. Yeah, eight uh, five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I it's was a three hundred pound rock. Like honestly, <laughs> the ghost is what weighs it down. Uh, yeah. it's all the regrets. I love all the Pokemon yeah. that you have to do kind of like a side quest to get. Mm-hmm. Those are always the fun yeah. ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Mike? Um, honestly, I was going to give it a low score, but then, yeah, you also brought up that, like, I, I always like when you have those cool little, like, side kind of things. And, like, mm-hmm. even remembering they, 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 they did that again, like, in the DLC in an interest, in the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC in an interesting way where you had to, like, there's, like, basically in the, it was on it's in like the last one like the winter like tundra region and mm-hmm. like you go to like the part of the island and there's like a grave just like randomly hanging out yeah that's right yeah and I, i'm trying to remember the weird thing you had to do specifically because there's like a thing where it's like you had to like go online in the game and then when you went online in the game there there like it, you could find people you had to like go and talk to people like the the actual like cause if you when you went online in Sword and Shield in those open areas, like you'd see other players going, you can like go up and like like start a talking to him and they'll just say like a random line. Mm-hmm. And you had to like do that a certain amount of times or something. Um or, or is either that or like one of like one of the random interactions was they would give you an item and then once you had that item, you could yeah. then go to the grave and that then the spear tomb like rock would appear at the mm-hmm at the grave and then you could catch it in that which i always thought was cool and like i know they did that in other i think there's like similar concepts of that in the earlier games so like that was always really cool so for that that alone otherwise like spear tomb's fucking stupid uh but (laughs) uh other than that though so i'll I'll give it a ghost rock i'll give it i'll give it a seven there's cooler ghost rocks in this in pokemon yeah there's like a ghost sword in this there's a ghost sword there's a ghost like just like sarcophagus like those are fucking I, I, yeah, right. like the sarcophagus is like a being in there so it's like a fucking ventriloquist doll yeah and then there, but then there's like the like the the galler version of that where it's like a weird like dragon rock yeah where it's like has like, it's like the serpent but it's still like the same like ghost yeah. that comes out of it those uh, i'm gonna come on, i'm gonna man. go with an eight um he gets extra points for being meta i love the meta pick you know i love it <laughs> Uh, all right, Mike, what you got? Well, I average this out. All right. Um, well, we're all, we're doing, we've done some sickos. So I guess I'll, I'll mm-hmm. keep with my, cause I have a sicko pick, at least in my opinion. Yeah. A, a sicko. Um, and that, and that one is Combi 415. This thing is literally That's three a- fucking faces. <laughs> But it's a but it's a I, bee. So you th- so like th- think of like the real life when you're like walking around and like you're a bee and you're just like ah and you like swat it, swat away or it actually sting you like most of are they like chill like it's like a bumblebee and it's just like oh that's nice and it's just like you know that's nice now think of that if it it was three fucking faces flying around you and just coming at you like that's 
fucking look at it. It's terrifying. What the fuck so, is this thing? It is so unsettling when you really think about it. When you really think about it, it's just it's just like the look little, little honeycomb shapes with just faces yeah. I was about on to say it. it's it's yeah. And you're this like, is that's, like that's what it is. And you're just like it's the it's like how how unsettled would you be if just like you're just like walking down the street and saw something that was like just just that it's just like three faces. You're just like what the what the fuck? And it's what like, is it, like, like a bee? Like it's just like what is what the? It's we're, I don't like it. We're pulling in some alternate sources here, um, but I'm looking at the the Bulbapedia page, which has a shot from the anime, and in an episode of the anime, which has been a long time since I've watched, uh, it turns out that comb bees can all like group up yes. and they can slot in to one another, yeah. so you can create a wall of comb bee faces. It's, it's just a wall what of faces. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, was, Alex, was, Alex, yeah. Alex, take that shit out of here. Take that shit out. Oh, this, so I don't know this, if you guys are yeah. looking at this, but I gotta post this picture so you guys can fucking see it. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this bubble media page and, get, and scroll down a little bit because it's like if you think about that what of the like fuck combies all grouping up and creating a wet wall in front of you exactly. of like organic exactly. wet Pokemon. It's just a, it's no, just a thank face. you. It's an it's, it's it's a face. And it's like I guess a it's wall like, of faces. It's like it's a wall of faces, and if those are faces, it has like a mouth. Like it's a mouth too. It's like a wall of faces and mouths, and like it's fucked up. That's all I'm saying. And like I'm looking at the because um, I have the the I have the Cerebi the Cerebi page pulled up, um, and, I, and that has like the po the Pokedex entries, which I also like because it says apparently they are like. They like the, each of the little combs are like a Pokemon, and they can like combine, like you said. So like, it was not necessarily like three as always. Apparently, I guess, but I, I don't know because like there are always three in the things. So I'm, hey, I'm, man, this is just a sticky Magnemite. All right, yeah, we seriously. know what we're talking about here. Yes, <laughs> and, it, and it lives. It lives nothing but to serve. It's this this one. It says it says it ceaselessly gathers nectar from sunrise to sundown all for the sake of Vespa Queen and the swarm. It's just a bunch uh, of faces that do nothing but collect stuff for a bigger bee. What? Some choice some choice Pokedex entries here from Heart Gold Soul Silver. At night, comb bees sleep in a group of about a thousand packed closely together in a lump. <laughs> so this is like <laughs> just, just, you're just you know you're just on your Pokemon adventure. To going out, uh, going out into the wild site to catch a Pokemon, and then you just turn a corner, and there's just combies on, like you know, just sleeping uh, together, sleeping, and just a big f pile of weird honeycomb. A faces. lump. You, you know what's funny out, is like, I. What the fuck? I've always loved combies until this moment when I realized this very harrowing and horrifying fucking experience for this animal. Yes. Uh, it is literally a a fucking borg yeah it's, it's terrifying. literally i find dude they're they're stronger together stronger together oh god they're terrifying i think we gotta rate this thing what are you thinking mike um i you know, you know it's 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 terrifying but also i love i love the horror so i'm gonna give it a yeah 10. yeah i'm gonna give it a That's nine I'm gonna give okay, it a nine. Nine. okay okay because i love i love the horror we've all night yeah, I do like the the sheer fear that this has stilled mm -hmm. in me. So I, I will I'll do an eight uh, yeah. for the fear factor. What are you thinking, Quinn? I'm gonna give it a seven five because I used to really love this Pokemon. <laughs> and now and you'll this never was look like, at it the same way. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, was yeah, like never, you'll never see it the same way. Exactly. This is like seeing an axe like just someone die in front of you. Like what? Oh, this is life changing. Wow. Kombi is like a great middle freako. Too. It is. I've never thought of Combi as a Frico. Hundred percent a Frico. Hundred. I mean, I mean, the real Frico is uh, Galarian Mister Mime. So, yes, and we. I mean, we it's aspire true. to he's, live in yes, that level yeah, of fear. He's he's on he's on he's on the throne of Frico's Pokemon Frico's for sure. We aspire, but, but we it's aspire a, but it's to a, be. But also, it's a, it's a throne of Combies that he's sitting on. It is. It is. <laughs> As he pulls I, out his keyblade because he's fucking Xehanort. <laughs> we can, that I'd that is that the video. dream. Right I'd there. play that video game. <laughs> yeah, Quadrantis. That's what it's all about. Look yep. out, Kingdom Hearts fans. Um, okay, so a lot of great ugly Pokemon out there. Um, I think this one is very good because it's in the name. Uh, it's per ugly. Good oh, old God. per ugly. 
Uh, sure. Number yeah. 432, thick boy and or girl. Yeah. Uh, Per Ugly is just an absolute unit of a Pokemon. Mm-hmm. I want to point out, we talked about Licky Licky, which is uh, it was like 500 pounds or whatever. Per Ugly is three foot, 96 pounds, just pure, pure muscle. Yeah, pure, pure muscle and horror. That's a very smug face that's gone on. Absolutely. But like, it's also got a chest like the size of a barrel. Yeah. So, (laughs) like, I I get it. I respect for ugly. I respect also a Pokemon that's like willing to call itself ugly. Uh, Yeah. And you you know it must be because it says its name out loud. That's what determines the name, obviously, nothing else. I I like it. It has an interesting uh, flavor text here. I have the, the brilliant diamond and shining pearl. Uh, Pokedex entry uh, for Shining Pearl it says to make itself appear intimidatingly beefy it tightly <laughs> cinches its waist with its split tail so it's actually using its tail to like make itself like buff, a corset buff up like that like a corset exactly yeah I never even That's funny. noticed that yeah and it has like the little piggy corkscrew tail also when yeah. you see it yeah. it's very cute mm-hmm. its yeah, whiskers it's... look like crocodiles which has always bothered me really yeah, look I'm, at those I, things. I'm into it because it's like another yeah, way it's yeah. going to chomp your face. I can, yeah. yeah, I kind of see that. They look more like guitar guitars to me. I know. That's yeah. fair. I just see like the mouths like chomp, chomp. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's fair. Uh, it would claim another Pokemon's nest as its own if it finds the nest sufficiently comfortable. That's from Heart Gold yeah. and Soul Silver. Okay. This is just going to roll up and take your home. Perugly. Yeah. Uh, it, it buffs up. It's it buff up, buffs up with its chest, and yeah, it just takes your home. A, a purely so, useless Pokemon because it's normal type, <laughs> just like all yeah, other normal type that's, Pokemon. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Um, but I just love the swagger. Uh, so you get you get a six for me, Pro Ugly. I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. Six is a good score. All right, we start at six with the good ones. All right, not everything can be above a five. It's true. It's what do you true. Think, Quinn? You like the cat Pokemon, Quinn, so I, I feel like this one appeals to I you. do. I'm also going to I'm gonna give it a 7, okay. because if you flip 96 around, you get 69, and that's a very nice number. So nice. it gets a solid 7. Nice. <clears throat> Nothing but science here mm-hmm. on the ranking committee. Yep. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh, probably. What are you thinking, Mike? Um, after, after, I, I'm, I'm just, I've just been, like, sitting here, like, staring, staring at its staring. face. At this model uh, on the on the diamond diamond and pearl uh, thing, I think I think I think I'm gonna give it a four just because I I don't like its face or its or how its ears like come off of its face. Its whiskers, the whole situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the the whiskers are like kind of fine, but then just like I feel like I feel like looking at like the 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 I forget the name of the thing that comes before it. It has like a more like cat like looking face. This Pokemon just like has like a weird face now, and its e- and its ears look dumb. How they come off of that's, its face? So I'm gonna give it a. Four. That's per ugly. That's per ugly. Yeah. And it's that's a, it's in the name. So four. it's in the name. I love I'm it. it. I'm gonna give it a four. We gotta check in with the normal types, you know, mm-hmm. every now yeah, and again. Yeah, and it's and it's, <laughs> and it's a normal type, and yeah, I always I always avoid normal type Pokemon whenever I play. There's very very few I will go after. Yeah, not everybody can be Snorlax, you know. It's true. Um, Quinn. Speaking of Pokemon that can beat Snorlax, <clears throat> I have maybe the best edition from this generation. It is a Pokemon that's a normal type. It is Bidoof. Mm. There it is. See, Bidoof was, was on my list. I was just waiting. Who pulls the Bidoof, Bidoof yeah, chain? Who, who pulls it? The Bidoof card. We've had... We've had uh, how many Freakos now? Five? Four? Mm-hmm. Someone needed to break that chain. We need a we need another Pokemon that is perfect in every way and maybe receiving the perfect 10 from across the board. Oh, uh, we're going to have some some split opinions on this one. <laughs> no, we're we're going to have we're going to have some varying opinions. I'm just going to forewarn everybody listening at home. <laughs> I think 
it's I used to hate this Pokemon. Sure. But as I've like grown up and like it's just a fucking beaver that's cuter than beavers. And it does have those big, you know, big big two it's front the, teeth. It's got, it's got the chompers. Mm-hmm. While I hate its evolution because it scares the shit out of me. Yep. Um, it's, it's yep. Yes. The barrel because that is a True fucking fear. That's yes. it. that is um, an actual nightmare creature. Yep. Um it's amazing that something this adorable can exist. It and it weighs forty four pounds. It's a thick boy. <laughs> it's a foot it's <laughs> like, only a foot tall and it weighs forty four pounds. <laughs> yeah. I mean all muscle. Uh, oh, yeah. Those, but I do screen. love, I do love its brilliant diamond entry in the Pokedex. I know I, I read nerves. that too earlier. That's why I like leaned back and was like, "This is this is this is pure." Mm-hmm. With nerves of steel, nothing can perturb it. It is more agile and active than it appears. Listen, mm. and endearing. That's 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 endearing. That's like a man. That's like a man who's just like a person rather who's just like, wow, this thing is just like wow and just like really and like really really like enraptured by a padoof and as a kid who played who this was my hm machine now that i don't have it i'm like i can just give this not have this thing evolve yeah just have you can, it be you cannot, you cannot be annoyed by like well i gotta have this thing and now you can just appreciate yeah. it as like look at this little guy look at him look at him yeah it's great he's just a fucking little guy yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there with you, but I definitely have a lot of uh, science and question of facts uh, about Badoof that uh, sure. still boggle me. Because, uh, again, on the Cerebi page I'm on, he is classified as a plump mouse Pokemon, so he's not a beaver; <gasps> he's a mouse. A plump but he, one, but that. he evolves into <laughs> Babarel, which is a beaver Pokemon. It's, on his classification, he is a beaver Pokemon. So the barrels are Badoof somehow through with the power of his, his nerves of steel and his endearment uh, evolves into a beaver, which like he defies science uh, and evolutionary traits. Cause I don't think beaver beavers are technically rats. Maybe I should, yeah, that that's, that's something I need to look up right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah are beavers rodents? Yeah. Um, these are extremely important and relevant questions. It's, it's true. I, I need I need to know this. I mean, is okay. Beavers, well, Mike's okay, looking for um, Yeah, I'm at it. I'm at it. Yes. Uh, beavers, either two of either of two species of amphibious rodents. So it's an amphibious mm. rodent. So it is technically considered wow. a rodent. Okay, there you go. That's extreme. The Angry Beaver show just got extreme. I just, just not to fucking yeah, break that up. It's like the game. Changed you, the they game. were just they were just fucking rats the whole time, dude. Yeah, they're just <laughs> that, and that checked out. Those guys are slimy rats. rats. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they know. Just trying to get out of work, you know. Badoof does look like he would smoke weed with you on the couch, which does give him bonus yeah. points for me, and I do like that about him. I appreciate that, Badoof. You're bringing a chill energy that the world needs. I just, I just hate this motherfucker, you guys. What? I, <laughs> I know, I know. Some, some of these, you know, we're gonna eventually cross over all of the ones. Like, you know, heaven forbid we ever fucking rate a zoo bat on this goddamn show. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a. <laughs> it's going straight into the garbage. <laughs> yeah. But I want you to know that Boodoof is like in zoo bat zone for me. I've seen really? too many of these. I uh, hate looking at them. I hate thinking about them. Uh, yeah. No, I, 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 I can uh, definitely from like a playing the game moment to moment playing the game perspective. Yeah. Yes, I totally relate to that of like i don't think i'll ever put one of a badoof or or it's a evolution but oh, no. on a pokemon <laughs> team i don't think i'll ever ever train one but like just looking at it, it's just like yeah that's 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 as far as it goes with me with this sure. pokemon that's where i'm at i also right, I, Quinn. Also, I also do like when i was looking at it's uh the gender differences the female version of badoof has a bigger beard which i appreciate <laughs> yes that is a good Let's get that. Uh, all right, Quinn. What are you going to rate it? Badoof is a 10. Okay. 
I, I respect the commitment. What are you thinking, Mike? Um, that, that I'm not, yeah, I won't lie that that Pokedex entry really got me in the face. <laughs> as a powerful, as a powerful statement for for Bidoof. Um, It says fucking perturb in the goddamn yeah. Pokedex and entry. Like, and like, like something come that's on. also something that's also for me is like again thinking about that most recent Pokemon Snap and how well Bidoofs are used. Yeah, in Bidoof that. is good at it. Yeah, because you like see like the little squads floating around and swimming around the 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 area, and you can like. Throw, if you throw like a glow thing on them, they'll like turn upside down and they'll be super cute. You're just like, yeah, look at those guys. Look at them go. They're great. Um, but I'm trying to think of them more, uh, but I'm trying to think of them in the sense of the, the di- in the diamond and pearl uh, mentality we're in with this game. And from that perspective, <clears throat> they are cute and adorable. And I'm glad I don't have to use them as an HM uh, machine. Uh, but yes, they are everywhere, and I don't want to use them. So I'm gonna I'm gonna split it split it and give them a seven five. Got it. I was gonna give him a one. Damn! Wow! But I'll, wow! I'm gonna, the slander! <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm the give anti Badoof agenda. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a two because you guys made me like a little more. <laughs> you gave him a fucking two. <laughs> Fuck out of town, bro. Fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, man. That's a divisive score. 6.5 total. I love it. Also, Badoof <laughs> is number 13, my favorite number in the, the Sinnoh Pokedex. Like, come on, y'all. Yeah, but he's, he's 399, all right? Nobody cares. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> I love it. This is my one, right? It's like everybody's yeah, gonna get one that they get, get to touch on that everybody else likes. Like, so I'm so excited to get to the one that I like that everybody else likes. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, Mike. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick in the 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 we went into the cutie uh, direction uh, with our sure. Pokemon choices, and this is one I think feels like uh, underpicked. And I think it's because more of not the Pokemon itself, but more what the, the, the weird travesty it evolves into. Um, and that is number 410. It's uh, Shield on. If you remember that Shield guy. Shield on, yes. Yeah, he's like he's like the little baby fossil Pokemon of Diamond and Pearl. Where he's like a little Triceratops. Oh, yeah. Triceratops looking. Not fully Triceratops. Look at him, though. He's just like a cute little guy. He's got like the cool little. He's like really determined because he's because he's got like the big like shield face. He's just like a cute little guy. At the same time, he's again he's he's only a foot tall and he's 125 uh, pounds. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! Because that big shield, he has to carry it around. Hey, we got to talk about how heavy these fucking bones yeah. are, you guys. I mean, hey like, man, one of my Pokemon a, is over 500 a, pounds. All he's right, a, he's, a, he's a rock and steel Pokemon. So that means he's like carrying around a big steel plate on his face. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. So like Those are strong little legs. Steel, man. steel plates are, are are a big deal. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I like shout out to the fossil Pokemon from Diamond and Pearl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shield, and then like the little the well, the little T Rex. I, I don't like as much as this guy, but I but I would say I like the, both the little guys. But then the thing that this guy evolves into, what the hell is it called again? I don't even remember. That thing is a travesty, in my opinion. Bastilodon or something. Best, yeah, it's a Bastilodon. Bastilodon, Bastilodon of like. They could have, I would have wished they made that maybe a little bit more. Uh, it evolves into a fucking tri- monster. Tricer- so. Triceratops uh, looking dude compared to like, it's just like, I don't know. It's just like a big dumb face. I like mm-hmm. his face. I like the yeah. evolution. Yeah, it's, he's all right. But um, I, I wish they went a different direction with it. But I do like the, his that little that little cute fella. Uh, yeah, he is adorable. Mm-hmm. He's a cute guy. Um, it, it, I like, I like this shining pearl. It habitually polishes its face by rubbing against tree trunks, and it's weak from attacks from behind. So please, don't startle him from behind anybody because he doesn't deserve it. I'm. That's curious. actually a very cute entry. Mm-hmm. In the in black and white, it says it is outstandingly armored. As a result, it can eat grass and berries without having to fight. I just. Don't know oh. what that means. It means it <laughs> like means, people it just means, don't mess with it. Yeah, yeah. Basically, he, it means he can, or they, it can, it can, um, Hank eat, it. eat peacefully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not worry. I just want to fight uh, and not worry about like things trying to hunt it or murder it. Mm-hmm. Which is always a good thing because like, none of them should do that. 
we never talk about like the Jurassic Park side of Pokemon where there's just John Hammonds everywhere taking fossils and resurrecting. Yes. Yeah, and bringing him back to life. Truly yeah. it's, it's, it's problematic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I love it. I love it in Pokemon. Yeah. I love that that was like a weird influence. They've just kind of kept going. Yeah. And they just like re- revive a Pokemon into real life for better or worse. And this, and this, um, and this time I personally think it's better. Yeah. Uh-huh. These guys deserve a second shot. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Shield on an eight point five. All right. What do you think, Quinn? I'm gonna give it a seven five. I think it's really, really cute, but I think it's ugly ass trans like evolution holds it back. Yeah, sure. That's fair. Because it goes from oh, it's this cute little baby. Oh, here's this ugly ass man. Yep. Oh, I'll go with a seven on that one. I, I agree. He's a he's a cutie. Mm-hmm. A little, little cute guy. Um, uh, which is back to me, right? Yep. Yeah. Back to you. Uh, I think these are probably gonna be like the last ones, right? Final three, uh, final six. Yeah, that, that works for me. Yeah. Um. All right. So, I guess I'll. I had a, I had a cutie picked out. I will go with uh, the adorable one, number four ninety, Manaphy. I guess this is technically oh, a go. legendary Pokemon. Yes. Uh, right? Uh, yes. I believe I watched a Pokemon movie about this Pokemon. Um, this was one of the ones that you get with like a special gift, right? Is the thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, it's one of those. I feel like I remember <laughs> starting every single time I played Diamond and Pearl with this Pokemon. So I think it was like one of the ones you just kind of get right away. Yeah. Um, or maybe there was like some special circumstances that I had set up that always had it. But uh, I like Manaphy. Um, I forget like the like weird mechanic that Manaphy has. Doesn't it have like multiple forms or whatever? Um, Does it? Uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to look through its uh, thing. Cause there's like, well, there's uh, it evolves. I never remember that there's, it starts as like Fion. Yes, that's right. It evolves and you have to like, you have to like, uh, do you have to I think he has to like really like you to evolve? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying to look up what Fion does. Fion can be bred from Manaphy, but does not evolve into Manaphy, is what this says. That's right. It has like a special offspring. Yeah. Uh I I just think I like vaguely remember the Manaphy movie. Uh <laughs> which is to say I know nothing about it. Yeah, um, I don't remember. I feel it like well. it had like Ponyo vibes for whatever yeah. reason. Uh, but I just thought Manaphy is adorable and good. Like, if as far as special gift Pokemon go, starting with a water type, always clutch. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, look at this little face. It's got like two little eyebrow things just going up, just looking so happy. Uh, yeah, I, I really like Manaphy. I don't know if either of you guys have ever used Manaphy, so that's why I'm kind of curious. I, I, I haven't used it. If I'm being real, I think it, this thing looks stupid. Yeah, got me. Fucking tough. Um, I just want to bring up the, the point that um, Manaphy is one of the genderless Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's like one of the weird facts about it. And it's also it weighs three pounds. So uh, that's Lightweight. cool, I guess. Finally, yeah, a lightweight like, Pokemon. <laughs> it's like it, and it's it's a twelve inches big, tall. So it's like it's, it's a, a it's foot. a little guy. It's literally a little fucking guy, mm-hmm. and that's cool. I remember uh, liking this Pokemon. It's and knowing these weird cool facts, I'm like, I like it even more now. Yeah, it's definitely like one of those weirdos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that. I think I think it's just like by this by this point I had like gotten over the like they've done this like weird special kind of like cutesy legendary pokemon as like a bonus pokemon Mm -hmm. like i feel like they they do that they still do that for most pokemon games now but like this was like kind of like the first one where i was like okay i'm kind of over this (laughs) sure because i I think i i I missed celebi and so this one caught me yeah you know yeah Yeah. like there was yeah because there was like mew and then celebi and then like and especially on top of shaman shame it yeah like that, that even that shaman's like this generation's that's that was gonna be my point yep. was like this generation mm-hmm. they like kind of overdid it where like the three legendary like trio pokemon were like almost look 
almost exactly the same to kind of this Pokemon. It's like the same kind of style. Then you got Shaman, mm-hmm. who's like a cooler, like more unique, I think, version of that that kind of cute, uh, like kind of legendary Pokemon you can get. And then it has like the cool like form it evolves to. It looks like a little dog, which I thought was really neat looking design. Sure. And I just and I just think this Pokemon was just kind of like okay, yeah, we've I think we've 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 gotten enough of these now that I just I I don't really care, I don't really care for these anymore. And this mm-hmm. is like it did not feel as interesting as inspired as some of those other like baby legendaries to me so it just yeah. sure. was Rodham like, this generation too Rodham was, Rodham was, Rodham was this, this generation, generation. it didn't ha- it didn't have a bunch of the different forms yet where it's like it turned into like a microwave and all that stuff yet I think yeah I think that was that's what I was one. thinking about taking Rodham but mm-hmm. but that was kind of like where I like Rodham gets to be like a Pokedex at some point they, they get yeah. enough love yeah um yeah I think that the big separation with this one just for context is like i actually used this pokemon throughout a whole playthrough which was mm. cool because i got it right from the beginning so i think that helped with the the attachment there yeah for sure versus just dreaming about catching a celebi in a forest yeah and so <laughs> at the cool, end of the game yeah having those cool moments of like oh how do you get this thing wow yeah for yeah. sure yeah cool i will i'm gonna you know this isn't like a top tier pokemon but i really like man i'm gonna give it eight eight point oh what do you think, Quinn? I'll give it a seven five. Take it. What you got, Mike? I'm gonna give it a four. Hell yeah. Dig deep. Dig in. We gotta, we gotta the express fences. the scale. You know, it's a ten mm-hmm. point scale. Yeah. Use it. Um, all right. That's uh back to you, Quinn. Okay. Now, this is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Came from this generation. It is also one of the Smash characters I play. His name, their name rather, is Lucario. Furry gang, rise up! <laughs> like, <laughs> I knew somebody would pick Lucario. <laughs> it, it would be, it, yeah, it would, it would be Quinn too, of all people we knew. That makes yeah, sense. And, He's and fighting type. I, I I have a fondness for fighting type Pokemon. I will always have a fun mm-hmm. type, like fun fun. They're just. It, it there's like earth, wind, fire, steel, all this shit. That's like fighting, and I'm like, yeah, sure. all right, that that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I don't know, it's you have to revel level them up from Relu, Relu, or however the fuck you Riolu. say this name, Riolu, with like friendship, and it's really fucking hard. Yeah, and like when yeah, you I get Lucario, it is so rewarding. And he has one of the more universal names, like his name in Japan, French, and like German is Lucario. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of cool. It, it's he's it's a, it also speaks English yeah, or understands English. Mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like it's so, a fucking smart Pokemon. It looks cool. He's got like the he looks like fucking Batman with the spikes on his fists and shit. <laughs> and like. I don't know. His shiny version is like a yellow. It looks way different and really cool. And he's also a fighting steel. Like, you really can't get better than that. That's a Luc- good combo. Lucario is definitely like, he's got, it's called close combat, I think. Like, yeah. you take that into the Elite Four and you're going to fuck some dudes up. It's very yeah. satisfying. So... I'm going to I'm gonna be this unpopular Pokemon opinion, maybe, maybe not. I... I fucking love Lucario. He's one of my favorite Pokemon, period. Uh, and I know, I feel like Lucario does get a lot of shit um, yeah. for being kind of edgelordy looking. Yeah. Um, and I understand as someone who likes a lot of edgelord characters. <laughs> um, but I, I think Lucario is sick as heck. Let me see what yeah. his Pokedex entries are. He's also classified as an aura Pokemon. So, like, whatever the fuck that he means. So genre of Pokemon. Yeah, like, he, like, he's, if you look at his entries, he's basically an empath. Like, sensing the aura emanating from others, it can read up their thoughts and movements. Like, I don't know, that's pretty fucking badass. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. like such, um, 
like anime sense like uh, yeah. like in platinum it says a well-trained one can sense auras to identify and taking the feeling of creatures over half a mile away and i just yeah. think of like goku being like i just sent something past two miles to the south yeah, yeah. yeah. he's very he's but very I, much he's very the, it was always very much to me like the like the anime like stand mm-hmm. in for this for this and like he definitely it definitely was like a poster i think some of the the discourse around that Pokemon was just because like he was kind of like the poster child Pokemon of that yes. era, very much so. Yeah. And I think like people were either you were either really into it or not into it. And like some people were just not into that. I never I never minded him um overall. Like I didn't use him a lot during that time, but I never really minded him. And I understood why mm-hmm. he got a lot of uh dype because it was like a cool design overall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like this kind of fighting wolf. Uh, looking dude for yep. sure um i but i was always partial to at least to my diamond and pearl playthrough because like i didn't play as much uh ruby and sapphire because it's a gen 3 pokemon but metacham was kind of like that cool yeah. cool fighting pokemon that i always used in gen 4 a lot even though it's technically from gen 3 for originally like that was because i just didn't play ruby and sapphire a lot i ended up going instead of going for the car i went for metacham because i was just like oh this is just a cool Fighting mm-hmm. psychic Pokemon, a cool combination of abilities and just a cool looking Pokemon, and I always really liked uh, that one a lot. He's definitely was still one of my favorite Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, Lucario's. Uh, yeah, I do not have a lot of Lucario takes. Ultimately, I've, I'm just kind of <laughs> and I'm he's just kind so of fine with Lucario. <laughs> That's kind of where. And I'm he's at. so cool that he's one of the few Pokemon in Smash. True. He like, uh, mm-hmm. he's also in Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. He, he was like kind of the, the main face of that for sure. And it makes sense because like yeah, again, he was like very much like the when you think of that era of Pokemon and like Diamond mm-hmm. and Pearl and like even like I'd say DS three three DS era in general. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's like definitely like the one of the first Pokemons that will probably come to mind for a lot of people, so it makes sense. Sure. Yeah, I like the the kind of Egyptian god overtones too in the design. Mm-hmm. Very Anubis. Very Anubis, yeah. Thing. For sure. Uh, yeah, and I, I like the the Lucario movie too. You know, he talks he talks to Ash in his mind. It's, mm-hmm. it's anime, as you'd expect. Yes. All right, Quinn, what, what would you give him? anime Pokemon. Lucario is a ten. Yeah, I'm giving out two tens this episode. I don't fucking care. Bring up the favorites, I guess. I assume. Yeah. yeah. It was either this or Torterra, and I was like, you know what? I'm going with Lucario. Hey, Tor- Torterra also great. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Mike? Uh, I'm gonna give him a seven. Okay, I'll I'll hit us in the middle with a nine. I think uh, it's the highest score I've given this episode. <laughs> All right, the last one then, Mike. What you got? Well, y'all literally just named him the best Pokemon from Generation Four, baby. The best starter okay. from Generation Four, Tor. Terra. Look at this fucking thing. Let's fucking Sick go. Sick as fuck. How can you not be like, holy shit, this is not just a cool turtle. It's a turtle with like like plants, a tree, and mountains like fucking growing off its back. Like how how, how can you not immediately be like sick? This was like the first time I I pretty much had only ever used water starter Pokemon for like the first three generations. And even still after that, like Torterra was the one that like broke that streak because like when I finally saw it, I was like, "Holy shit, this is like one of the coolest looking Pokemon I've ever I've like pretty much ever seen up until this point." I just I love the design of it, and like it's always been super cool to me. Just like the whole idea of it, it's seven feet tall, six hundred and eighty yeah. pounds. Like just it's think, just think of that. Man. Like just think of that. Like that presence and like how cool that would be. Like you know, it'd be like seeing like any real life animal that size like seeing something like that would mm-hmm. be like just fucking cool and i just i just i just love that idea and i love i love it's i have i have its shining pearl entries but i'm sure some of the other entries it has in the other gens just will make it be like oh this is yeah constantly just a cool ass pokemon the the heart gold soul silver entry ancient people imagined that beneath the ground a giant a gigantic torterra dwelled. dwelled and you want to know if you i don't know if you ever saw the detective pikachu 
I did not, but I saw this scene from it. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Detect- Detective Pichu, like, like, full-on do that, and there's, like, a scene where, like, people are running around, and there's, like, a, gi- like, a giant torteras, like, multiple mm-hmm. of them, like, come out of the ground, and, like, there's this whole, like, escape scene where they, like, find a, the, a lab with a Mewtwo in it. Spoilers for Pokemon uh, Detective Pikachu. He's on the poster. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, and they, basically, when they're, like, escaping the lab, when they find this... Uh, like they're being chased by Greninjas who are like doing like crazy ninja shit. But also when they come out of that, like the whole combustion, like has woken up a bunch of tor- like, like, you know, mountain sized, literal mountain sized torteras. And mm-hmm. they come like crash on the ground. It's like a, like super cool scene from that whole uh, thing. It's like, they definitely it's like cool lean idea. into that in these decks entry, the black and white ones, some Pokemon are born on a torteras back and spend their entire life there. Exactly. That's, That's how fucking entry. cool that is. <laughs> it's pretty sick. Yeah, like some. Yeah, like the diamond and pearl ones are a little bit simpler. I'm just like, yeah, small Pokemon occasionally gather, gather on its unmoving back to begin building their nests, and just hang out there. And it's just, yeah, just a cool Pokemon. It's like the cool, like it's just a cool design. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, easily is still like one of my favorite Pokemon period, but also one of my easily my favorite Pokemon from this generation. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna give him a nine point five. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Mike. I'm gonna give him nine five too. Is I remember when I me I played Pearl for the first time, I was like, a turtle Pokemon? Fuck yeah, Turtwig. Then I got Mm -hmm. Grottle. I was like, this guy like looks like ass. Then I got the Torterra and I was like, let's fuck. Go! Oh, yeah, and you're just like, holy shit! I was like, yeah, and I did like I was I was didn't even use the internet, so I didn't know what the fuck it was gonna be. I right. saw Grot, I was like, okay, I guess. And it was like Torterra. I was like, this fucking rules. So fucking yeah, cool. Torterra is like a total tank too. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. you can basically earthquake through the entire Elite Four if you want, and yep. <laughs> you'll be fine. Um, yeah, I'll give. I was gonna do a nine, but I'll do a nine five just so we're all. Hell yeah. Even. Hell yeah. Uh, Torterra is cool. Not enough love for the turtle Pokemon. Yes. No. Absolutely. I just want to hang out with a Blastoise and a Torterra. Just like. Yep. Let's just hang 100%. out. Uh, the, the Lapras has to be there. Well, I'm just talking. Around. It's like a turtle only but company. Yeah, yeah, but... tur- the turtle squad. Yeah. 100%. But I'd, I I'd go there. Meanwhile, I'm I'm s- s- drinking a pina colada on the back of a lapras while you you two are just uh, I want vibing. A fire turtle starter. We got to make it happen. We got to get the trio. That'd be, that'd be I, really cool. I'd want to cool. see it. I'd be, I'd be in for that for sure. Mr. Nintendo, I know you're listening. Um, any, I, I guess we're we're more or less done for the yeah. for that. But any other quick shout outs to any Pokemon you want to give for Gen Four before we before we call it for the episode uh xehanort jr mime jr (laughs) exists sadly mr Mr. mime jr i Uh, did not i i didn't pick mime jr because i didn't think mime jr was as offensive as yeah mr rhyme no mr rhyme (laughs) that's truly (laughs) terrible um i like uh krogunk a lot krogunk Uh, toxic croak yeah toxic croak um and i don't know if those were i think those were new this, yeah this gen. they were they were they were new for gen 4 yep so one mm-hmm. of the ones i was going to bring up is floatzel uh just because yeah. i fucking hate that pokemon <laughs> really <laughs> another one that i just you see all the yeah, fucking time, all the time and i, I like i like it's, i like, like i like it's, it. i like its first form but yeah the second form once it gets that you're just like eh, i don't know about this. i love you know floating yeah. on the back of the water it's it's a fun vibe i'm here for it i just like you see that pokemon so fucking much and i'm over yeah. it yeah for sure um, um but yeah I, those are the big ones yeah those ones are cool one I, one i like shouting out just because it's like a cool pokemon is roserade roserade's dope yeah yeah, yeah. I, I didn't read and i didn't realize i'm now looking at them on its page now the shiny version of it uh get, it gets purple and black like roses which is like, yeah. it's, it's pretty sick um what's the hippo one the hippopotamus one uh hippo uh, hippo hippo down is that what's going yeah hippo down uh in the female one of that's like all black which is yeah. super sick yeah mm-hmm. that was fun for sure it's a great pokemon I'm glad yeah. we I'm glad we did this because now this actually makes me want to go play play Diamond. Good. Let's uh the the total scores we got here just real quick go through them mm-hmm. again. 
Uh, Licky Licky netted out at a seven. Uh, perfect seven, should've one been, might yeah, say. Should have been lower. <laughs> you gave it a seven. <laughs> yeah. uh, Spirit the Tomb. <laughs> Spirit defense. Tomb. Uh, 7.83. Uh, Comb B. Just 8.17. Pure respect for Nightmare Fuel. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a fearful respect. Respect yeah. and yeah. fear. Per yeah. ugly, 5.7, just perfect. Bidoof, 6.5, also perfect, in my opinion. <laughs> Shield on, 7.7. Manaphy, 6.5. Lucario, 8.7. Our highest rated today, Torterra, 9.5. As it should be. As it should be. I, I would just like to say that there, I believe there's only been three Pokemon that we've given the exact same score to. Torterra, Xehanort, <laughs> and uh yamper uh and licky licky technically we all gave oh, seven technically, yeah, yeah okay yeah and those are all those are all pretty high up there right mm-hmm. those, yeah those i mean xehanort is all x so oh, yes. Right. Yes, yes, that's right. that's, <laughs> the, the unknown that's score the, of the, x the, 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 the yeah unknown score the, the true yeah theory. <laughs> I see that's... why we stopped because we really weren't going to get funnier than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's true. This is still really this, is, this is still a lot of fun. I always like, does. Yeah, these are uh, fun. coming yeah, back together. It's so we'll uh, we'll do it again someday for sure. Yeah, continue, we'll definitely be back. Continue, yeah, continue the ranking uh, lists. But that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Land. Thank you everybody for joining us. We had a this again it's our last trip for this year. We're gonna be mm-hmm. back in probably later in February once um what is it, Legends Arceus Pokemon the next Pokemon game comes out. Yep. Yeah. I um, will say like just before we end it though, I understand that Shin Megami Tensei five is a huge game and none of us played it. Yes. Just so that way <laughs> it was mentioned on yeah, this episode. I'm sure like yeah, if you're if if you if you're looking for that kind of stuff. That's the can, anime game, right? Yeah. That's very you, anime. Yeah, okay. If you're looking for that discussion, I think that, yeah, that's more of Scott's Scott White's RPG Mr. RPGQ's uh wheelhouse. So Yeah, even even outside of my wheelhouse, I would say that so, game yeah, is so I'm sure but, he, he will have if he has not already had a discussion on him on that on his show. He's still working through it. That uh, we talked about it on uh, the most recent episode of the monthly podcast. Yeah, cool. Yes, that's definitely where where I'd recommend that discussion because yeah, I probably it's not my kind of not my kind of RPG, uh, so I probably won't check it out. Um, yeah, respect the hell out of it, just not for me. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, we'll be back. Um, yeah, we we won't have an episode in January because we're going to be doing game of the year stuff. So you feel free to check that stuff out. We'll we'll probably be on the podcast services like this show is for Irrational Passions and on probably on YouTube. I'll probably do some video stuff for that. Yeah, there should be video stuff for that. That should be somewhere in the middle of January. And then there's a there's a new thing coming out at the end of January involving myself and Scott White and Tony. Oh, yeah. Uh, It's finally, finally coming out there. Anybody who's a fan of tabletop uh board games and stuff like that just stay tuned it's it's been been, i've been working on it for so fucking long uh and it's finally gonna come out in january so look forward to that cool but yeah uh until then uh everybody have a happy holidays happy new year and we'll all see you next time Bye. Bye. bye